I'm just going to give a bit of background on um, World Vision UK first of all, in case the people in the audience don't necessarily know who we are. Um, we are the world's largest international development children's charity and we're a child-focused Christian relief development and advocacy organisation. And we are dedicated with working with children, their families and their communities um, to overcome poverty and injustice. Um, we work in nearly 100 countries and we have a long history of working with both DFID and the FCO and we receive funding from both. Um, so um, we are well placed, um, I feel, to, to speak to this issue um, and we want to help the government get this merger right. Um, Laura, you're absolutely right, this offers us a unique opportunity, um, but it must be dealt with well um, and it must be dealt with delicately. Um, and I want to just share a few thoughts on why I think it's absolutely vital um, that the UK gets this merger right. We've already heard um, that the UK is a leader in aid and development because every year UK AID saves lives, supports livelihoods and protects the world's most vulnerable children and their communities. Um, I've met South Sudanese refugees um, and UK, AID, UK AID is helping them build the life skills and the forums that they need to bring peace and reconciliation to their communities. Um, I've heard of 16 year old Ada in the Central African Republic um, and UK aid helped him escape from armed groups and is funding the training and education that he needs to help bring him a brighter future. In four years, and these are DFID's own stats, UK aid reached 32.6 million people, which includes at least 10 million women and girls with humanitarian ass assistance. In that time, it also supported the immunisation of more than 56.4 million children and supported 14.3 million children to gain a decent education. So we should be immensely proud of our development work. As a nation, we have decided to be outward focused and run a department whose entire function is to care for the world's most vulnerable communities. And it's not just a well-intentioned, compassionate response, it's also excellent. It's excellent development work. And so um, in this merger, the best of DFID and the best of that development work must be brought into the heart of the FCO. Um, and I guess, Laura, if you're asking me what my key concern is, it's that that won't happen. Um, but I think the government can make that happen. Um, and I'd say that there are three key ways in which they can ensure that. The first would be maintaining a poverty focus. The second would be maintaining 0.7%. And the third would be maintaining the high levels of accountability and transparency that DFID currently has. So poverty focus. Um, the purpose of overseas development assistance must always be to alleviate poverty and champion human rights in the world's toughest places. If the UK is to continue to deliver on our international commitments to the sustainable development go goals and the leave no one behind agenda, then we must have that renewed focus on aid in the FCDO. The coronavirus pandemic threatens to reverse decades of work towards the SDGs and the UN estimates that 71 million people will be pushed into extreme poverty. So it's even more vital that UK aid reaches those people and that the UK continues to have a focus on the poorest. The Prime Minister and the Foreign Secretary have both repeatedly said that, the UK, uh, that UK aid should be spent in the national interest be that security, diplomatic or trade. And that is very understandable. But the UK, but UK aid already benefits the UK. It benefits the taxpayer both directly and indirectly. It's a crucial force of the UK's soft power. It contributes to global peace and global prosperity. If there's anything that the coronavirus pandemic has taught us, it's our global interdependence and our shared global security. And UK aid is already leading the fight against coronavirus and we can't lose that progress. Further, um, the UK public want UK aid to be spent on reducing poverty before they want it to be spent on the national interest. The Development Engagement Lab ran a survey um, on what the UK public want to see in the FCDO. And while most people were unaware of the merger, their top priority was transparency and accountability, which I'll come on to later. And the second was a focus on the world's most vulnerable people. That was their second priority. So the British people are proud of UK aid and they're proud of what it does. And we should be very wary of redirecting it for security or trade interests, particularly in middle income countries. 
And I was very pleased, Harriet, to also hear the Foreign Secretary make that commitment to spending 50% in the conflict affected and poorest countries. Because redirecting aid might undermine its work, it can further disenfranchise the most vulnerable, lead to increased fragility and instability, and fundamentally undermine its purpose. So in order to prevent this happening, World Vision recommends that the government um, appoints a minister or a chief secretary for international development who would be responsible for ODA, um, ODA spend and would sit at cabinet with the prime minister and on the National Security Council, as the secretary of state currently does. And that would ensure that the voices of the world's poorest were heard at the highest level and our continued focus on poverty alleviation. It goes without saying, but I'll say it anyway, that the FCDO should also continue to spend ODA in line with the OECD DAC rules, which the UK was foundational in writing, and which currently help ensure that UK aid gets to those who need it most. The second is 0.7%, um, and I won't spend too much time on this, but just to highlight that um, we're one of the only countries to meet this target, um, and it's an achievement of which the UK government should be proud of and which they have repeated their commitment to maintain, which is absolutely fantastic. We've heard that Canada has seen a gradual erosion of its aid budget and um, UK law currently prevents that from happening and we must continue this and safeguard this commitment. And finally, accountability and transparency. DFID is consistently ranked in the top 10 most transparent ODA funders. It's, it's easy for taxpayers to find out where their money is spent through DFID Initiatives such as Dev Tracker um, mean that you can see what aid projects have been funded where and how the money has been spent, and then the effectiveness and the impact of those projects. DFID has rigorous accountability and scrutiny mechanisms. The International Development Select Committee, the Independent Commission for Aid Impact, the Independent Aid Transparency, um, Transparency Index all ensure that DFID's ODA spend is consistently targeted on the world's, world's poorest and is robustly reported on. We don't want to see an erosion of this transparency and, and accountability. We want to remain a world leader. And so the FCDO should continue these high levels through independent trans, um, parliamentary secure, scrutiny. So the IDC should be maintained or a new cross department um, parliamentary committee focused specifically on ODA needs to be established. So I think that um, while the merging of these two departments isn't necessarily a recommendation that World Vision would have made prior to its announcement, we do think the UK has a unique opportunity to learn from Australia and Canada. Um, and again, thank you to our friends and allies across the waters who have um, come to this event to speak to it for us. Um, and we need to make sure that we do this in a way that Britain's place in the world and the high quality life-saving work of UK aid continues. Um, the Foreign Secretary has repeatedly said this should be a merging of equals um, and not a differed takeover by the FCO. Um, and so if we want to continue to see progress in global peace and prosperity, then that must happen.